I've noticed a uh, a bit of a problem with one of the uh, with the patch that I've been working with uh, so far, um, which I just wanted to correct before I went any further. If I open uh, Grain Generator Two, which is basically the last thing that you've seen, um, you will notice that the um, <coughs> it you get a complaint in the Max window. Um, so I'm sorry about not noticing this before, uh, but it says channel one out of range buffer. Um, sound has one channel um, so basically it's complaining this waveform display is complaining because the buffer as it stands at the moment doesn't have a second channel but I'm asking it to read a second channel um, so uh, just to, to get round that what you could do um, and also so that these actually display something even when you open the patch you could for example just put in uh, a, a duration of 1000 milliseconds and uh, tell it that there will be two channels. It will, of course, when you when you send something to it to replace the existing contents or lack thereof, um, <coughs> it will uh, give you the second channel anyway, assuming you you drag in a, a two channel file. Um, but uh, anyway, that that's why it was coming up with that message. Which, if you've been copying the uh, copying what I've been showing you out. Uh, then you'll probably have had the same problem. Um, so if you were wondering why that was, then that is why that was. Um, so now, hopefully, if I save this and then open the patch again, um, I'll get rid of this so that we're not confusing ourselves with it still being there. Um, hopefully now we don't come up with that message. We also come up with <coughs> uh, the buffers actually, the, the, sorry, the channels actually showing what they're supposed to be showing. And hopefully when we actually drag in a sound, uh, I'm going to go into presentation mode. And what I didn't show you last time as well um, is that I've put the drag and drop window on top of the waveform displays, which I don't think you can see from that, but uh, it means that I can drag the spoon drops file or whatever audio file I've got onto anywhere onto that space and you can see or you should be able to see um, a little little light blue line around it at the moment which obviously disappears and it indicates that the drag and drop window is um, superimposed over all of that so now that I can drop it now you see that's odd I don't know why it only shows the left channel because it has loaded both and I can show you that um, if I unlock the patch and lock it again I'm not quite sure why it's doing that um, if I find out by the time I finish this tutorial, then I shall let you know. Um, but anyway, the, the, the patch uh, does work. So, moving on to what I was going to um, move on to. Um, we've got basic granulation functionality in our granulator patch so far. Um, We've got, as we talked about before, we've got grain position that we can specify. We've got, uh, we can change the grain length. We can change, we can transpose the grain, um, and we have some enveloping, and we can also change the rate of, um, uh, or the the interval of that. Actually, what I haven't actually put that in this uh, presentation view, so I'll have to remedy that later. Um, but. Uh, in most granulation packages, you usually have a, a certain range within the file that you can granulate from. So, you know, for, for example, if I if I made a selection that went from the beginning of this, where my cursor is now, to the end of that bit, where my cursor is now, um, then I would expect grains to be taken from, you know, each grain to be taken from somewhere within that space, but not necessarily the same place every time. And, of course, when you do that, you get a much more interesting uh, texture in your result. You might also want to do the same thing to grain length so that you have a degree of randomization in terms of how long the grain length is each for each grain. Um, similarly for grain transposition um, and also in terms of the time. Um, <coughs> so uh, so how regularly or you know the, the, the density of your um, grains. Uh, you might want that to to not be absolutely consistent. Um, so we want to basically add some element of uh, randomness to that process of selection and playback of grains. Um, so uh, we've already looked at the random um, random functionality in in Max, and we've looked at I think I seem to remember, and I can't remember exactly which tutorial it was, but I think think we've already looked at 
specifying a range and an offset for um, a, 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 you know, a range choice uh, when, when generating random numbers. So we'll, um, I'll open a patch now, we'll make a new patch, um, and we'll just remind ourselves of that. Um, so uh, an object, obviously, that we, we might well want to use when specifying a range um, is the uh, range slider, so R slider. And we'll use that. Um, and if I drag it to, uh, to make it longer than it is tall, then you might remember then it, it becomes a, a horizontal slider as opposed to a vertical one. Um, and what we want to do is to figure out um, what the range size is and then add an offset to that. Um, so, uh, well, I'll do it and then explain what I've done, just to remind you. I'll use the exclamation mark minus um, uh, object, which, if you remember, is the uh, reverses the um, uh, the inputs for the for the uh, subtraction object, and that will give us the range size. So, if I put in a integer box there. Uh, remember that by default this range slider operates between 0 and 128 um, in terms of its size. So now we have a range of uh, 21 when it goes from oops, there you go. if, we've got a range, if it goes to 49 to 70 it gives us a range of 21 um, making extend that range and uh, 49 to 94 is now a range of 45. Um, <clears throat> so we can use that to specify our uh, random number size. So if I send that to the right hand input of the random object, then every time I uh, send a bang to random, then it will produce a new number as we know. So uh, I'll have to send it again because I've only just made random. So if we if we specify uh, a range size of 45, um, then we'll get numbers between 0 and 44. Because random, if you remember, produces number, numbers between 0 and 1 less than the number that you specify in either its right inlet or as its argument. Um, so we've got uh, the appropriate number of... Uh, the, the appropriate range, but obviously we want that range to reflect the uh, the range that we've got in in our range slider. Um, so we need to add the offset. We do that by um, adding a plus object and sending the left hand, which is the low value uh, output of that, to the right hand input of the plus object, and sending the results of the random. process to uh, to the left hand um, and we should now get again I need to uh, make that selection again we should now get numbers from uh, 49 to 94 as indeed we do so that works fine and in fact we could um, simply add for example for grain length um, we can make we can use the range slider in to replace the uh, the slider object that we've got over here. In fact, um, why don't we do that now? Um, so what we need to remember is that the grain length that we or the grain that the largest grain length that we want is going to be up to um, uh, 5,000 milliseconds, so I'll need to use that as my range in uh, for the range slider. So I will make it 5,001, um, because of course it will go from 0 to 5,000. So make a range like that, and now we should get numbers that reflect that range. Um, and where does where where do we fit this into the patch? Well, we want that random number to be produced every time we hit a grain. So for each grain, we want a random number that is appropriate to 
the range that we've specified. So we want the range slider obviously to be in the main part of the patch, um, but the random uh, generator, if you like, itself needs to be in the voice abstractions so that, so that we get a new random number per grain. Um, so we will uh, do that. I hope I haven't lost you, by the way. Um, hopefully it will become clear as I, as I show you.